want to thank the funding network for the great opportunity and Ashoka for supporting uh, Ashoka Fellows and all you do for us. So I flew all the way from Uganda yesterday to be here with you. And I'm sitting next to this German gentleman, lovely gentleman, but quite bitter. He said, I have worked 31 years in foreign aid. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work and I had enough of it. And I started just having this big smile on my <coughs> face because it reminded me why the journey of Sawa World began. I grew up in Tanzania and I had the luxury to travel to communities all over Africa. And with a different perspective, not a perspective that they're not capable. The opposite. The people in poverty are so capable. They have the solutions. They know how to do it. They have their own way. And that's going to solve poverty. And at the age of seven, that's what I made my mission. And it became Salawa. So at Sawa World, we aim to see a world where one billion people currently living in extreme poverty are lifted out of extreme poverty with local solutions, with their own solutions. We call it a Sawa World. Sawa meaning equal in Swahili. Solutions to poverty exist. They already exist, and I've seen it my entire life. It's an untapped resource, but it's something that we tap fully. We find solutions in five themes. Health, basic necessity, gender equality, empowerment of children and youth, and environmental protection. In the last five years, we scaled up to 11 countries, but went back down to one. Because we want to do it right. As you can hear, our goal is really ambitious. And if it doesn't work, and we have so many questions all the time. We have more questions than we do answers. Because we're doing something that the world has not done before. So we scaled back down to one, which is Uganda, to test all the new innovations. And it has made the program so strong that from there we'll replicate back out. We want to reach 50 countries. Why 50 countries? Because that's the countries that still have extreme poverty in their own countries. But even beyond the 50, we want to be able to reach all the countries of the world. And inspiring Tom that was talking here earlier, he talked about local solutions within his projects. It's something that every country can benefit from. And that's why our tagline is solutions from within. So how do we do it? We find local leaders that on their own have found solutions to uplift their communities out of poverty. They themselves have come from poverty. They've done it with no aid no charity, and make significant differences. Our goal is to help them share their solutions to millions locally so others can replicate. So just on the top left here is John Mutamba. John Mutamba grew up in extreme poverty, and he was working in a tea plantation at the age of eight. He never finished school, but he started experimenting with agriculture, and he created a unique food security model, a three-step model. Very simple. He's helped 15,000 single mothers and grandmothers on the edge of survival, most of them with HIV AIDS, out of extreme poverty. One person, no AIDS, no charity. So then how do we help people like John Mutama? Well, we partner
partner with local universities, like the University of St. Lawrence in Kampala. They train unemployed and vulnerable youth as community reporters. They get, yes, they get technical skills like videography, but on top of the technical skills, they get the philosophy that solutions are within their community. And that's sparking a whole new generation of young people in the countries that face extreme poverty. They get trained to document the successes on short videos like that of John Mutamba. How did he do it? After the training, they get employed by SAWA to, on a regular basis, document these successes and share them in their communities. So they share them in two ways, indirectly and directly. Indirectly is radio, TV, and print. Very much focused, though, on the media tools that reach people in poverty. And number two is community brainstorms on the solutions and working in secondary schools where SAWA clubs are starting to pop up. We call it direct outreach. So in the last 12 months, as we scaled back down to Uganda, it's been such a gift to do that. Because as an entrepreneur, you want to go bigger and faster. But scaling down and doing it well was our biggest gift. So in the last 12 months, we had 27 national broadcasts in Uganda alone. We've trained 11 and employed 11 Sawa youth reporters in the last six months. We have three clubs with hundreds of students in Uganda. And we've reached 5,000 people directly and an estimated 4.8 million indirectly. Now, sustainability of our organization is really important. The money that we get is invested in the salaries of the youth and the local teams that support them. But even that, we want to cut within one to five years. And we're doing that by working with universities that are taking over the program and turning them into curriculums. Governments who want to know these solutions because these solutions are their, their mandate. Media who's buying the content. And even the communities want to pay a little bit of fee to see those solutions shared in their community. So that's the goal, 100% self-sustaining between one and five years. Now, with the money tonight, the 5,000 pounds that we're pitching for, we want to go to the next university in Uganda. We can train and employ five Sawa youth reporters for a year. They can document 60 local solutions, which is what we did the last year, and again, reach an estimated millions of people uh, in their communities. But there's many other ways that you can become involved. We work with corporations like Future Shop, like Western Union. We're always looking for a really good board of trustees, you can start a school club. You can inform us about our university internship programs. And last but not least, help us spread the word of this new movement, Solution Foundation. <coughs> Thank you so much.